Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm just doing a short video about fuses. I had to replace a fuse in my microwave today and I had pulled out my fuse master set. So I decided to make a video. Also, my previous video about wire nuts, I forgot an important point that was mentioned more than once in the comments is that when you are using wire nuts, uh, make sure to pre-twist the wires. Take your linesman's pliers get them on there and twist those wires up. It's a little bit more difficult when you're dealing with uh, solid core wires. Sometimes you got to bend them over to make a little Y shape, but you do want to twist them together like so before you actually put on the wire nut and it makes a more secure connection. After that addendum, <laughs> let's talk about fuses a little bit. I am actually not super knowledgeable about fuses besides that there are low voltage and high voltage fuses and that there is a variety of different styles and there is what is known as fast blow and slow blow fuses. Now the big difference between a fast blow and a slow blow fuse is a fast blow fuse is the moment it hits a certain level of current, say 3 amps, and that's what fuses regulate is current. They don't regulate voltage. The voltage rating on fuses is for, the, to put it in the best terms, safety. If you have a fuse that's rated at, say, 32 volts, and you use it in a 250 volt circuit, it, many times in a pinch, it, that will work fine. But the reason it's a safety concern is that a 32 volt fuse may not have the insulation rating. So even if it does blow properly, you can actually get arcing inside the fuse because you have far more voltage than what it's rated for. And it's a safety concern. The other thing is in either high temperature or uh, applications such as microwaves where there are very high voltages that are stepped up, they use ceramic fuses like these. Instead of having the quartz shell, they have a ceramic shell, and that is important. If you have a place where there is a ceramic fuse, such as in a home appliance, you really do want to use a ceramic fuse to replace it. And they are harder to find and are a little bit more expensive. Now, circuit breakers have taken over for households, and you know, only if you're in a very old kind of uh, house or building will you actually still have threaded in fuses or large style barrel fuses such as these. Or, excuse me, similar to these. These are small style barrel fuses, and these are actually still used quite often in a variety of equipment just because they're just uh, the next size up from what is considered a standard AGC fuse. Now this fuse size, there's basically this size, there's some short ones which I have mixed in here. I dropped this once and that's why it's all jumbled up. It's really unfortunate when you drop a kit like this because it's pretty daunting to actually sort out everything again. And they do have models like 312, 313, 314 which helps you identify the uh, particular grade of fuse, I should say, or what its intended purpose. But these are still used. These uh, smaller barrel type and lots of heavy equipment, power to conditioning equipment. I have some uh, heavy duty power conditioners that use these style fuses. And so that's, if you run into these, that's, uh, they're just a standard barrel fuse, just a larger version than what might be the traditional size people have run into. There's of course automotive blade fuses. And many people are familiar with these. There are a few other styles, such as big square plug-in ones. These are the most commonly replaced are these blade fuses because they're used in many other applications besides automobiles. So everything from power inverters to your car stereo amplifiers usually will use this mid-size, this three-quarter inch blade fuses. And they come in a variety of amperages, usually stopping at around 30 to 40 amps. And if anybody didn't know, a fuse is just a couple of blades with a specially sized piece of wire. So when too many watts are going through, the wire, the resistance of the wire heats up and causes it to melt, thus breaking the connection like a switch. And that's how they provide safety. And then there are just these tiny ones, which are a little bit more common on modern vehicles. Now, you may have a situation where you have some faulty wiring or, uh, say, a cigarette lighter adapter where... Maybe you're powering a laptop or something, and occasionally it blows the fuse. It's not a shorted wire, although it could be wiring that's going out. But you constantly are blowing fuses, and you know it's because you the laptop was just starting up or something along those lines. Or you had too many things plugged into an inverter. Well, they do make circuit breakers, such as these, which actually, they don't fit in all situations. These are a couple of 30-amp versions. 
and they have the same tines as regular blade fuses or these three quarter inch blade fuses as we can see here and that's their self resetting they heat up when they hit you know their rated current such as 30 amps they disconnect like a household circuit breaker and then when they cool off they automatically re-enable themselves and you can go about doing your business and so they can be handy and it's nice they do sell these at auto parts stores they do have more compatible versions for the small blade fuses these are all small blade fuse compatible ones and they're a little bit more cooperative uh, you may not get the covers on because these things are so tall but they're the same situation you can get them in all the different sizes we can see 10 15 20 25 30 amps and these are all self-resetting circuit breakers and they're actually pretty neat here i've popped one open let's get a little zoom going on here and you can see this is all it is there's our contact there's our piece of metal which is similar to the piece of metal that's inside a fuse where inside a fuse that piece of metal melts and it's permanently destroyed and you have to replace it on this one you can see that it's slightly curved and when it heats up it come on camera there we go ah right there there we go when it heats up this piece of metal and you can almost hear it makes a little snapping sound and it pops up and disconnects and when it cools off it will close back up and that's how it works as a automatic thermally controlled fuse continuing on sorry for that odd cut we have some a couple different styles of these at least three quarter inch they do make them in the smaller versions as well let me see if i can't dig any up i'm not sure where they're at but these are kind of interesting and neat there are two different styles one of these is the easy id and one of these i believe comes from harbor freight out of all places and these are the same style blade fuses except for we can see what looks like an extra little circuit inside there that's an led and how that works is when a fuse is in its working condition it's just a piece of wire it has no resistance so there's no way for electricity to want to take an easier path because there isn't any easier path than that straight piece of wire and the led remains turned off but when the fuse pops when that piece of wire melts down then it becomes obviously a much harder path of electricity to take so then it will go through the little led and light it up so if you have a fuse that's popped you can just open up your fuse cover with the power on and you can see which one is lighting up and these are just a couple different styles the easy id is all integrated into an absolute specification size fuse which is kind of nice and then you have these which they kind of integrate into the top of the unit and put a little layer of glue which is fine unless there's certain situations where you have a cover and just that the thickness of that glue right there may prevent the cover from shutting but those are just two different styles of the same thing led indicating fuses and i don't know if i mentioned but bus fuses and little fuse are the two giant you know the two giants of the industry and then there's really everybody else just you know for your information and then we have a variety of fuse holders these are just some quick little snap-on ones where you just take two pieces of wire stick them on each side snap it closed and then it actually becomes a blade fuse holder so those can always be handy this is a little blade fuse puller tool where is this oh, okay that was a little chinese one that was America. and then we have like these where you can solder or wire crimp them in line these are a bit heavier duty rubberized uh, fuse holders and I even found some American made ones so I was pretty happy about that and then last but not least we'll take a look at a variety of these different fuses because they all do the same thing and one thing you don't have to worry about besides being the ceramic ones which you do have to worry about we can see that there's a variety of different uh, shapes of elements depending on the voltage rating as well as the current that they're supposed to regulate or protect against and we can see we have a variety of different types from like flat blade style this one's really complicated where it has a couple pieces of wire in a little soldered bracket with the spring on it so when it heats up too much the solder melts and then the spring retracts and breaks the connection we have some like this which is a spiral kind of wrapped around a fibrous material we have wavy ones it's a, a heavier duty spiral and then we even have ones like this which are just a metal rod now this one right here 
and it's kind of hard to see on these fuses, but you can always read and see what amperage they're rated for. These can go really low down to a single amp or even less than an amp, and they can be lots of increments. In this set that I have, it has one and two tenths of an amp or 1.2 amps, 1.25, 1.5, uh, 1.6, 1.8 lots of real specific increments so you do also need to watch out for that but when they take higher amounts of current then they have thicker rods and the amperage rating is true if you get something decent like bus or little fuse and they're all little fuse will have their little lf buffs will say where is it right here bus will say buss if you get real cheap ones they won't have any manufacturer on but they will always tell you the amperage rating these are just stamped on the end such as 30 amps because that is such a critical aspect. If you ever run into a fuse that you cannot read the markings on, then you have no idea what it's rated for. And it becomes real dangerous that when you have too large or too powerful of a fuse in a particular type of circuit. If it requires a 5 amp fuse and you just put in a 10 amp, obviously that will work. However, whatever may have blown the 5 amp fuse, when you replace it with a 10 amp, will result in a fire. And that's the whole point of fuses is to prevent fires and damage. Anyway, I actually hope that several people will comment about fuses because my knowledge you know, is pretty limited, but I do have a variety of them and just wanted to put out the information that I know about them as well as, of course, show what a master set of fuses might look like. And it's always handy because when I pop a fuse, it isn't uh, the kind of situation where I'm hunting around. Got to find just that right fuse. I dig up this kit and I replace it quickly and that uh, actually has helped me out, you know, make a living many times just because I have this reputation for having these types of kits, you know, just call Caddis because at least he'll have some idea of what to do or the appropriate people who would be the ones to, you know, resolve any whatever issue it is. Uh, mainly I do, you know, service and repair work. Um, but the fact that they know I'm somebody who really likes to have uh, a appropriate set of supplies right on hand so we can just get things done and not have to order fuses and run around town trying to find just the right amperage of just the right kind of fuse. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this fuse video. Uh, I certainly have plenty more videos coming up and I really appreciate everybody who's been subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed to the Caddis Maximus channel, please do subscribe. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.